What's up, YouTube? Tube? Here is the B-roll bike. Zero FXS. This thing is so sweet. I literally didn't think I would own another motorcycle, but I actually serviced one of these motorcycles and like immediately I had to own one. It was like, so like I've owned like 600 CC street bikes. My last motorcycle was a thousand CC RC 51. That thing was crazy, 180 horsepower. But to be honest with you, I, the more I rode it, the less. You know that um, adrenaline rush that you get when you ride? Something fast, I don't know if you, if you can relate, but that went away with all the motorcycles. I went from, I did choppers, I did like 2000 cc choppers. I did 180 horsepower street bike. I didn't, I lost it. This sucker, this will get your adrenaline going. No noise, look at this. No noise. And you freaking fly. You get on the gas and you just go. There's no, no there's like, there is noise, it's a weird noise. You'll hear it. But let me give you like the little tour. So the first thing I did was I removed the reflectors. I put HIDs in, or HIDs, that's the old school, LEDs in, that super white lights. They come stock with like halogens. If you're a zero owner, I have those on the website. Oh, I should leave that on. And then I got rid of, see this is what used to be back there, the license plate holder, blinkers, all of this was attached up underneath there. I got rid of that, installed this sucker. I fabricated it out of steel. Oh, I put the little uh, bar in blinkers. Check these out. I have these on the website. You can get those for any bike. Let's get the other end. Here's the blinker. You turn the blinker off, it just, it's just like, what would you call that, hyper white? Super trick. If you've never ridden one of these, you, you have got to try it. And if you've never ridden a motorcycle, don't ride one of these first. Here we go. We did decent, we did decent. Keeping up with them. This will blow your freaking mind. I remember the first time I rode a, like a 600cc crotch rocket and gave it full gas. I could not believe like i i couldn't comprehend the amount of power that that bike had like it was like supernatural freaking power so i can only imagine like what this bike would be like if you've never ridden a bike motorcycle and gave this full acceleration like literally you be this is like a tron bike you, if you hear the noise uh, that it makes with uh the acceleration it's <laughs> it, it, I, I, there's no way to describe it. Oh yeah. Spin these tires easy. Spike is so fun. I know like the main question is like, what's the range? How fast does it go? So the top speed is 85 miles an hour in the app, but you can change that to 110. I'll, I'll explore that a little bit more in the ride, but how many miles do you get on a charge? That's gonna be about, if you're ripping and roaring, about 50 miles. If you're uh, ripping and roaring slash cruising, 85 miles. If you're just giving it like, just cruising like you would like an eco mode, about 100 miles. To charge it, there, there's uh, these cords. See these cords here? So this cord right here, just plugs in like right up under here. See this little spot, you just pop it. And then there's another, which is, to me is really odd, but you, 
you got to cut this or I remove some rivets. See those rivet holes? I like remove these rivets, pull this down like a son of a gun. And see that little connector? I still need to like cut that out. Basically, I've been pulling it down. And that plugs into this connector right here, which goes to this box. This box is like the uh, extra power source. So you have two connections here. It gives you about an eight hour charge. And then you double up with this one. And that one gives you about a four hour charge. So it cuts it in half. If you own a motorcycle, I don't know like how, I could see how you would be pissed off if you bought a, sold your old motorcycle, got this motorcycle, you try to go for a ride and then you're like running, you're trying to ride all weekend and then you're out of juice. To me, my rides are like pretty, pretty quick, you know, 50 miles max. So it works out for me. I replaced it with a Vespa GT250. So, I mean, this thing, as long as you know going into it, you're good to go. These ones start at 90, 9,500, I believe. I, I paid 12,000 for this with all out, all in with uh, the quick charger and the, the bigger battery and all, you know, the, just basically all in. But the cool thing is, is I'll get $1,000 back, somewhere around 1,000, 10% is what you get back um, whenever you, uh, a tax season and on the charger you get 30 percent back so i should get like i don't know 1300 bucks back or something like that since this is an urban bike i think uh we should try some urban stuff let's try it i've been wanting to do this let's do this classic Yes. So here's the little app. If you notice here, I've got this little mode button. To push that, that'll bring me into sport mode. If I push it again, if you look right here, eco mode, and then you can go to custom. I normally ride in custom. If you go into your, uh you click custom ride setup here see how see how you can uh, change that that's set at 86 miles an hour I can move that to 110 miles an hour but I keep it at 86 because it kind of acts a little weird when you do that because it tries to save power and stuff but I have the torque the regen and the braking all up on the custom mode and now I can go 110 miles per hour instead of 85 and my regain went back too. I'll go this way actually. This way instead. So when it becomes time for you to do like an oil change, spark plugs, your first service, things like that, don't worry, I got you covered. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> That's the cool thing about this bike is there's no oil change, there's no spark plugs, there's like very little service work that you need to do to these since they're electric. But with that said, I'll, I'll carry like the bar end blinkers, uh, replacement belts, LED headlights, things like that. I figure if I'm into this, uh, I probably want to sell the parts too. So I've got a lot of replacement parts, things like that. OEM parts from zero on the website at rollingwrenchdenver.com. So here's my gear I'm super proud of. I'm gonna put these on the website too. This is the speed and strength, like plaid. This is like my riding jacket. Looks, it's like incon inconspicuous. So it's got a pad on the shoulder, pad on the elbow, down the forearm, big back pad. This thing is super slick. And I'm not like a, this is a size small. And I'm a, I'm a pretty small guy, but my, you know, my muscles are freaking huge. But <laughs> once I put my helmet on, like, kind of like in proportion with my, got a peanut head, which I do anyway. But once I put this on, this, this jacket is like, you know, look at this, this thing. I'm totally protected. This is all Kevlar. So, pretty sweet. 
Let's ride this thing. This would be like the acceleration run. So ready? One, two, three. Swung the rear tire. 72. Got it up to 72 until the uh, Toyota got in the way. Freaking fast, this thing. Let me give you a for instance. So we're going 45 right now and we want to like pass. 70, just like that, super quick. This thing is, and the sound, I feel like I'm in Tron, seriously. Looks like we got a, uh, a Sunday cruiser. As far as on the highway, I'm on I-25 right now. This is like the main highway. No problem on the zero. The speed limit's 65, I'm going 55. Let's bring it up. Remember I have it set to 86, so there it is. 86, I'm not gonna go any faster because that's what the app is set to. But I could set it to uh, 110 if I want to. Here's Tent City. Like literally the city can't do anything about this in Denver. See all these tents? We'll turn the corner. If you look down there, there's even more. And more here. On both sides of the street, there's like tents everywhere. And people live in these. I mean, there's nothing the city can do. It's really sad actually. Look at all these. Tents everywhere. Trash. So that's like the negative end of uh, Denver. Let me, let's, let's go into the area of Denver where it's like, it's worth showing you. I recommend visiting Denver and Boulder as well. Denver is more of a party town, like sports, things like that. And Boulder is more of an outdoorsy, hippie, hippie town. So these houses here, like right now we're in five points. This used to be a really bad part of town. And now it's, uh, you know, it's we've got these new houses, these like three levels. There's a bunch of renovation. This is up and coming. But this used to be like a lot of gang activity. Um, not too safe at night around here. All these homes are made in like the 1800s and stuff. So it's a really cool area of town. Like look at this house. It's like that used to be a mansion for sure. And you can see the mountains up there. So Denver's a cool spot. You're in the city, but you can see the mountains up there. So now this is Larimer Street coming up here. This is where all the hip sweet bars are. The, that's all new within the last like seven to ten years bunch of cool bars and like galleries the Shake Shack you know we'll go this way but all the this is a brewery epic brewery have you ever heard of that that's that's a pretty cool brewery. This this place, this area is like so bumping normally. It's weird to see it so dead. It's like a ghost town. Let's go down this alley. It looks like there's some cool artwork down here. Look at this. These guys, pretty cool. Some more over here. Denver's full of art. Oopsies. If you guys are my diehard, my diehard uh, YouTubers, I gotta show you something. If you've been following me since like 2008, 2006, something like that, dudes, this is where it all started. We used to rent above 
Charlie's Tools back there, up there in that second story. Building was built in 1880, and we had all our scooters out here, things like that. That's uh, old school. That's Charlie's secondhand tool shop. There it is, Charlie's Tools. You better put your wood screws on, Grand Cherokee, because I'm going to blow your doors off. Here's something classic. I met my wife in that building right there. That's Broadway Plaza. We were the very first tenants in there. That was it, a bunch of good memories. I would have never thought I would have met my wife in there. This is a really sweet motorcycle shop, Erico Motorsports. If you're ever in Denver, check them out. Check these guys out. This old building, it is super, super slick. Looks like they're open. This is the Rhino Art District we're going into in Denver. Pretty sweet. Again, this used to be Skid Row. You want to come down here now? It's the shit. This place is cool though. They did it up nice. Bunch of art again. Denver's super artistic. See this Mercedes like service shop? I used to, I, li I worked there for about five years servicing custom choppers. Remember like Jesse James, Orange County choppers, things like that. Um, I was certified in Big Dog, American Iron Horse, a Big Bear. I was one of the only people in the United States certified in so many choppers back in like, oh God, what was it, like 2006, somewhere around there, five something. Around the same time I met my wife. Look at this piece of art. This is trippy. As you go next to it, it changes. Look at that. And then if you look back, something different. Check out my uh, blinkers, they're super slick. My light here. Little blue light on the dash, it's pretty cool. I have my high, uh, high beams on, I should, I'll leave those on. Well, that was a uh, fun little ride. I got 9% left. Pretty long ride, actually, two or three hours. Not all at once, but don't scratch the Audi. Tia just got it fixed. Somebody ran into her on the front fender there. So if you enjoyed that content, make sure you hit the little blue bell that's right on the side to get notified when new videos come out. Hit subscribe and We'll see you in the next video. I appreciate you watching.